Hi, my name is Ali Shirsava from Breacher Digital. If you're new to control loop design or perhaps control theory was not your favorite subject at university, then this video is for you. In this short introductory video, we are going to talk about control theory, what it is that we are trying to achieve uh, and define some uh, basic terms. And then in the subsequent videos, we're going to show how we assess the stability of a control system using uh, body plots. And then we will design a stable compensator for a voltage mode buck conductor. So let us say that we have one of these very long escalators in an underground metro station. Uh, and at the beginning, uh, there is no train and nobody on the escalator. So you've got this massive escalator that is moving up, but there's nobody on it. And it's going at a set speed that we have decided is a suitable speed. Now let us say that a train arrives uh, and 200 passengers come out of the train and they start going on this escalator as it's going up. What we don't want to happen is that as the number of people on the, on the escalator increases, the escalator slows down. So somehow we need to control the speed of the escalator and therefore we need to know the speed that is going at, we need to measure it, compare it to the speed that we want and regulate it so that it stays constant. And this is what we call load regulation. So one of the reasons we need a control loop is to have a good load regulation. And by that, what we mean is as the load increases, we don't want our control parameter in the case of an escalator's speed to fall down or droop. If we relate that to a power supply, uh, if you have got a power supply with an output of uh, five volts, as you increase the, amount, increase the amount of load current, we don't want the output to droop down. So that's one thing that we need. So uh, another thing is what we call line regulation. Now imagine you have your power supply and imagine that it's being fed by solar panels on the input. So it's taking a voltage from the solar panel and, and it is converting it to a different voltage. Again, we don't want the output to change if the input changes. Let us say that the clouds go in front of the sun and for a momentary period, the amount of radiation on the solar panel is, is reduced and therefore the input voltage to a power supply comes down a little. Again, at that point, we want the output voltage to stay constant and we call that line regulation. And therefore we need to have a measure of the input voltage and we feed it back into our control system and adjust the power output so that it stays constant. Then another thing that we are always looking for is what we call transient response. Um, imagine that, uh, as a, uh, that you have an industrial robot that is welding and imagine that you want to move from this position to that position and you want to put a spot weld on this exact position. Now, if you go slowly, you can get to it nice and easy and your spot. The point is we want to get there as fast as possible. So if I go fast, then as you can see, it is hard for my hand, well, robot arm to actually stop and you start overshoot, undershoot, overshoot, undershoot. Eventually you get to the point that uh, you, want, you want to get to. So that's what we call transient response. So ideally, you want to get to this point as quickly as possible without overshooting and undershooting. You just want to go like that and you want to stop where you're supposed to. Uh, again, in the case of the power supply, imagine that you have got your five volts power supply. For simplicity, let us say that it's a 10 amps power supply. And at the beginning, if you're looking at it on the oscilloscope, you will see that you've got five volts. And again, for simplicity, let us say that uh, you're drawing zero amps. At that point, this is sticking at five volts. If you've got good load regulation, as you increase the load, this will not droop. So it will not go down like that. Okay, now let us say that we're drawing five amps from a 10 amp power supply, and then we step. So your delta I will go from five amps to 10 amps. That load step is, is similar to this transient that I had, I was trying to get to that position. 
we do not want the output of the power supply after a load a step to dip and then oscillate like this okay in an ideal world we want this to recover as fast as possible so we would like the power supply in an ideal world you don't want it to dip at all but in reality it doesn't work like that so in reality it's going to dip then we're going to recover as quickly as possible without overshooting we don't want to recover or slow and we don't want to oscillate either uh, <clears throat> so again we need to design our control loop in such a way that in addition to giving us low, good load regulation good line regulation also we have a good transit response which we want therefore we want to get to our nominal value as quickly as possible without any ringing if we uh, um, do not uh, design this well then what will happen is it will start oscillating and if these oscillations are uh, uh, continuing on we call that an unstable power supply uh, mathematicians would call that critically stable but in engineering world we call that unstable and, and in fact beyond one or two rings you cannot really sell this power supply anyway you you really ideally want to to recover typically after one ring and a push just a little bit of an overshoot after and in order to do that we need to assess the stability now uh, what we have discussed so far is all in time domain so this axis here is time um, in order to assess the stability uh, we need to look at our power supply in frequency domain and what we normally use is something called a body plot so in our next video we're going to talk about body plots where they come from and exactly how you could quickly look at a body plot of a power supply and assess whether it's going to be stable or not